Numbers, chapter 29. On the first day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work. It is a day for you to blow the trumpets, and you shall offer a burnt offering for a pleasing aroma to the Lord. One bull from the herd, one ram, seven male lambs a year old without blemish, also their grain offering of fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an ephah for the bull, two-tenths for the ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven lambs, with one male goat for a sin offering to make atonement for you. Besides the burnt offering of the new moon and its grain offering, and the regular burnt offering and its grain offering, and their drink offering, according to the rule for them, for a pleasing aroma, a food offering to the Lord. On the tenth day of this seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation and afflict yourselves. You shall do no work, but you shall offer a burnt offering to the Lord, a pleasing aroma. One bull from the herd, one ram, seven male lambs a year old, see that they are without blemish, and their grain offering shall be of fine flour mixed with oil, three-tenths of an ephah for the bull, two-tenths for the one ram, a tenth for each of the seven lambs, also one male goat for a sin offering, besides the sin offering of atonement, and the regular burnt offering and its grain offering, and their drink offerings. On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work, and you shall keep a feast to the Lord seven days. And you shall offer a burnt offering, a food offering, with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Thirteen bulls from the herd, two rams, fourteen male lambs a year old. They shall be without blemish, and their grain offering of fine flour mixed with oil. Three-tenths of an ephah, for each of the thirteen bulls, two-tenths for each of the two rams, and a tenth for each of the fourteen lambs. Also, one male goat for a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering, its grain offering, and its drink offering. On the second day, twelve bulls from the herd, two rams, fourteen male lambs a year old without blemish, with the grain offering and drink offerings for the bulls, for the rams, and for the lambs, in the prescribed quantities. Also, one male goat for a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering and its grain offering, and their drink offerings. On the third day, offer eleven bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, offer their grain offerings and drink offerings, according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the fourth day, offer ten bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, offer their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering, with its grain offering and drink offering. On the fifth day, offer nine bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, offer their grain offerings and drink offerings, according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering, with its grain offering and drink offering. On the sixth day, offer eight bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, offer their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering, with its grain offering and drink offering. On the seventh day, Offer seven bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bulls, rams, and lambs, offer their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, 
in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. On the eighth day, hold a closing special assembly and do no regular work. Present as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, a food offering consisting of a burnt offering of one bull, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old, all without defect. With the bull, the ram, and the lambs, offer their grain offerings and drink offerings according to the number specified. Include one male goat as a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and drink offering. In addition to what you vow and your free will offerings, offer these to the Lord at your appointed festivals, your burnt offerings, grain offerings, drink offerings, and fellowship offerings. Moses told the Israelites all that the Lord commanded him. Chapter 30 Then Moses spoke to the heads of the tribes of the sons of Israel, saying, This is the word which the Lord has commanded. If a man makes a vow to the Lord, or takes an oath to put himself under a binding obligation, he shall not break his word. He shall act in accordance with everything that comes out of his mouth. And if a woman makes a vow to the Lord, and puts herself under a binding obligation in her father's house in her youth, and her father hears her vow and her obligation under which she has put herself, and her father says nothing to her, then all her vows shall remain valid, and every binding obligation under which she has put herself shall remain valid. But if her father expresses disapproval to her on the day he hears of it, none of her vows or her obligations under which she has put herself shall remain valid. And the Lord will forgive her because her father has expressed disapproval to her. However, if she happens to marry while under her vows or the impulsive statement of her lips by which she has obligated herself, and her husband hears of it and says nothing to her on the day he hears it, then her vows shall remain valid and her binding obligations under which she has put herself shall remain valid. But if, on the day her husband hears of it, he expresses disapproval to her, then he will annul her vow which she is under, and the impulsive statement of her lips by which she has obligated herself, and the Lord will forgive her. But as for the vow of a widow, or of a divorced woman, every binding obligation under which she has put herself shall remain valid against her. However, if a married woman vowed in her husband's house, or put herself under a binding obligation with an oath, and her husband heard it, but said nothing to her, and did not express disapproval to her, then all her vows shall remain valid, and every binding obligation under which she put herself shall remain valid. But if her husband actually annuls them on the day he hears them, then no utterance from her lips concerning her vows or the obligation she put on herself shall remain valid. Her husband has annulled them, and the Lord will forgive her. Every vow and every binding oath to humble herself, her husband may confirm it, or her husband may annul it. But if her husband in fact says nothing to her from day to day, then he confirms all her vows or all her binding obligations which are on her. He has confirmed them, because he said nothing to her on the day he heard them. However, if he actually annuls them after he has heard them, then he shall bear responsibility for her guilt. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses concerning matters between a man and his wife, and between a father and his daughter while she is in her youth in her father's house. Chapter 31 Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take vengeance on the Midianites for the sons of Israel. Afterward you will be gathered to your people. So Moses spoke to the people, saying, Arm men from among you for the war, so that they may go against Midian to execute the Lord's vengeance on Midian. You shall send a thousand from each tribe of all the tribes of Israel to the war. So there were selected from the thousand of Israel, a thousand from each tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. And Moses sent them, 
a thousand from each tribe, to the war, and Phineas, the son of Eleazar the priest, to the war with them, and the holy implements, and the trumpets for the alarm in his hand. So they made war against Midian, just as the Lord had commanded Moses, and they killed every male. They killed the kings of Midian, along with the rest of those killed, Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Midian. They also killed Balaam, the son of Beor, with the sword. And the sons of Israel took captive the women of Midian and their little ones, and they plundered all their cattle, all their flocks, and all their property. Then they burned all their cities where they lived, and all their encampments. After they had gathered the plunder and captives, both people and animals, they brought them all to Moses and Eleazar the priest, and to the whole community of Israel, which was camped on the plains of Moab, beside the Jordan River, across from Jericho. Moses, Eleazar the priest, and all the leaders of the community went to meet them outside the camp. But Moses was furious with all the generals and captains who had returned from the battle. Why have you let all the women live? he demanded. These are the very ones who followed Balaam's advice and caused the people of Israel to rebel against the Lord at Mount Peor. They are the ones who caused the plague to strike the Lord's people. So kill all the boys and all the women who have had intercourse with a man. Only the young girls who are virgins may live. You may keep them for yourselves. And all of you who have killed anyone or touched a dead body must stay outside the camp for seven days. You must purify yourselves and your captives on the third and seventh days. Purify all your clothing too, and everything made of leather, goat hair, or wood. Then Eleazar the priest said to the men who were in the battle, The Lord has given Moses this legal requirement. Anything made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, tin, or lead, that is, all metals that do not burn, must be passed through fire in order to be made ceremonially pure. These metal objects must then be further purified with water of purification, but everything that burns must be purified by water alone. On the seventh day, you must wash your clothes and be purified, then you may return to the camp. And the Lord said to Moses, You and Eleazar the priest, and the family of leaders of each tribe, are to make a list of all the plunder taken in the battle, including the people and animals. Then divide the plunder into two parts, and give half to the men who fought the battle, and half to the rest of the people. From the army's portion, first give the Lord his share of the plunder, one of every five hundred of the prisoners and of the cattle, donkeys, sheep, and goats. Give this share of the army's half to Eleazar the priest as an offering to the Lord. From the half that belongs to the people of Israel, take one of every fifty of the prisoners and of the cattle, donkeys, sheep, goats, and other animals. Give this share to the Levites, who are in charge of maintaining the Lord's tabernacle. So Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses.